I first got interested in lucid dreaming, um, as far as I know, just before my 12th birthday, when I remember I saw this thing in one of the Sunday supplements of the newspaper, which was advertising something called a Nova Dreamer, which was this kind of sleep mask that you put on your face when you went to sleep, had a little computer in it, and it would recognise rapid eye movement, like your eyes flicking, which means you're dreaming, and then would send a flash of red light bright enough to penetrate your eyelids, but not bright enough to wake you up. So then it would give you lucid dreams. And I was reading through this thing, and I was like, ah, oh, lucid dreaming, that's what I do sometimes. And this device says you can do it more. So I tore it out, and I went to my dad, and I was like, dad, dad, I know what I want for my birthday next week. And he was like, what? And I said, I want this uh, lucid dreaming thing. And I started to read out all its benefits and stuff. And he said, how much is it? And I was like, just $250 plus posters and packaging. And he was like, dude, in your dreams. So I never got one. But now I own about five or six, and we bring them out on retreats, everyone has a go and stuff like that. And they're, they're pretty fun. They're not as good as the, you know, as the real thing as actually training, but they can help people, uh, like kind of like stabilizers on a bike. So that's my first memory of being interested in lucid dreaming. But then it was when I was 15, 16, I started getting interested in Buddhism and psychedelics and mind training and martial arts and all this kind of stuff. And lucid dreaming came along with that. I just started getting these feelings that they kind of had to be something bigger than this. So I went down the kind of drugs route and I was like, you know, there must be something bigger out there. And then I realized that lucid dreaming could give you access to this without the drugs, without tripping out. And it gave you access to something in the mind that revealed that there is something bigger going on and that the mind is, is a great creator of that. So when I was about 16, I bought some lucid dreaming books and taught myself how to do it. And I found it kind of relatively easy looking back on it. So I think I might have had some sort of predilection towards lucid dreaming. Um, yeah, so I got to lucid dreaming with them just using it for just sex really. Like the first two years of my lucid dream practice were exclusively like sex. Because I was 16, like what else, you know, it's like not what else you're doing in your dreams. What else was I doing in my dreams? Because that was obviously my predilection. Um, but yeah, it got to the stage, you know, where friends were ringing me up on Saturday night. And I was like, nah, I'm staying in tonight, having an early night a hot date with myself and luckily a couple of years later I got into Buddhism and I was like and there's all this stuff like when you get lucid do a spiritual practice train for death and I was like oh that's what I'm supposed to be doing in my lucid dreams what is it that you do now in terms of lucid dreams now in my lucid dreams I try not to go around having sex with everyone and try and do what the what it says in Tibetan Buddhism which is to engage in your spiritual practice used as a, as a method to train your mind and to gain insight into the capacity of the human mind to create illusion. Every time you become lucid, you're gaining direct insight into the capacity of the mind to create and sustain illusion. So that when you wake up in the waking state, you are more likely to recognize illusion in both your mind and the waking state when it arises. And of course, recognition of illusion and recognition of deluded mind states is one of the core foundations of mind training within Buddhism. Uh, do you enjoy teaching it? How, how did you end up teaching lucid dreaming? I never set out to teach lucid dreaming. I was working as, I trained as an actor and then got into the music industry and was in several bands and hip hop groups and stuff like that, even a Buddhist hip hop group at one point. And uh, that's what I did. I was hanging out with a group of break dancers and rappers and stuff, and we used to tour around the festival scene and uh, teach kids, young offenders, that kind of stuff. So that was my that was my work. I set up a small company called Throwdown, which is uh, what I used to do full time. The Buddhism was obviously a big part of my life since I was about 19 when I took refuge, and the lucid dreaming since before then, since I was about 16. But it's never a career path. Um, but then about five years ago, I was asked to give a talk on lucid dreaming by one of my Buddhist teachers. And I thought it was like a one-off. So I agreed to do it because I was like proper geeked out about lucid dreaming. So I thought, yeah, yeah, I'll give a talk, that's cool. So I gave this talk and then at the end of the talk, without asking me, this teacher, Rob Nairn, goes, who thinks Charlie should run a six-week lucid dreaming course starting next Tuesday? And everyone puts their hand up. And I was like, God, man, you just threw me in the deep end. So then I started doing this course, and then I got this authorization to teach thing from Lama Yeshe Rinpoche, and then, and then it all just kind of snowballed. 